Okay, here we are under the hood of our three liter Duramax. This EZX module works in the 2020 to 2022 LM2 Duramax. So this will not work in the 22 and a half that is the refresh model truck. This is specific to the older legacy style uh, 20 to 22. So if you have the 22 model year that's got the new interior with the bigger uh, dash and and screen this EZX will not work in that refresh model uh, you can check out our website to see the VIN decoder so you can check your VIN and make sure that this product will uh, be compatible with your model so if it's the 20 through early 2022 this installation is specific to you now the first step of any uh, power module install is going to always be disconnecting the negative battery terminal now we do this to make sure that there is no power um, or voltage being sent to any of the underhood modules. Um, this makes sure that we won't have any check engine lights when we first start up the truck because we had disconnected the sensors. So we're going to start by removing this negative battery terminal. It just takes a 10 millimeter socket on our quarter inch ratchet and you've got easy access right to that negative battery terminal. So we've got that disconnected. And we can move on to the next step of this installation, which is actually gonna be removing this engine cover because we need access to one of our sensors that's tucked away back in the intake track. So we'll move our module out of the way here. And again, we're gonna use that same 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt right here on the engine cover. that's removed we're also gonna have to remove the engine oil cap set it aside here and it'll pop up and slide forward you can see it's got some rubber isolators on the back that attach it to these two points you just have to pull it out from there and then next step we're gonna put that engine oil cap back on so that we don't make we don't get anything dropped down in there, a socket or a bolt or dirt and debris. We'll set this engine cover aside for now. We'll get this engine harness here so that you can see what we're working with. Now the EZX module itself is gonna mount right here next to our air box lid. And we need to tap on to a couple of sensors here under the hood. So we'll get this harness all tangled. So you can see the main part of our harness here. This is where the module itself will plug in, which is gonna mount back here behind the airbox lid. So our harness is gonna need to be positioned there. We've got this larger connector that we're gonna attach here at this factory location. The rest of this harness is gonna be routed over the engine. We've got our mass airflow sensor connector that's here on the airbox lid. And then we have our map sensor that's back here at the back of the intake track. And then we have our rail pressure sensor that's up here on the front of the engine. So we'll get that harness laid out so you can see how that goes. Um, but in order to get access, to our map sensor that's back here. We're actually gonna remove the lid to our air box. We're gonna remove this uh, accordion hose. And then we're also going to take our coolant bottle and remove it from the firewall just so that we can move it aside and we can get access with our hands into that map sensor that's back there in the back. So to remove our air box lid, we first need to disconnect our mass airflow sensor. You have this red keeper on top. We just need to put our thumbnail inside that red keeper and pop it backwards. And then we can press down on the detent of that mass airflow to disconnect it, set that harness aside. And then we need to take the lid and this off. So we need an eight millimeter socket and then we'll need a flathead screwdriver. Grab our screwdriver here. Okay. 
We just need to loosen up these two hose clamps here. All right, now this airbox lid just has three bolts that hold it on. Two on the front and one right in the center of the back. Obviously we want to make sure we don't lose this hardware because we'll need to use it to put it all back together once we're completed with our installation here. Lift it up, slip it back to get the tabs loose off the front of the air box. And then get those hose clamps removed. We can remove the entire lid assembly. Now we're going to move on to relocating this coolant bottle just out of the way so we can get our access down to that map sensor. So to do so, we're going to remove the one mounting bolt that it has here on the driver's side of the coolant reservoir. It's going to use that 10 millimeter socket we've already used in a couple other spots. Again, don't lose this hardware. We'll need it to put it all back together. Now we don't have to drain the reservoir. We don't have to make a mess with any of that stuff. We just need to remove that bolt and then you'll see it's got these two mounting studs from the firewall. And we're just going to loosen that so that we can move this aside. Just give us a little bit more room to get our hand down in there to get to that sensor. Um, at this point, we will reposition our camera so we can show you where that map sensor is located um, and get that plugged into our new harness. All right, so we have our coolant reservoir disconnected from the firewall. We've moved it as far forward as we can. Our map sensor is located right here underneath this intake tube that runs from the air box around to the turbo inlet you can see this wire harness right here this black wire harness that's right here is leading into the map sensor that's located clear back in here so it's a little bit tough to get to especially if you've got big hands but you will have some room to kind of lift this intake tube up out of the way you get another half inch of clearance maybe from that um, but by lifting it up, that wire connector has a gray keeper right on the very top. So you've got to be able to put your fingernail, your thumbnail or your pointer fingernail on the, that gray keeper and slide it backwards. You'll hear it click or you'll feel it click when it slides back. Once that keeper has been slid back, you can press down on it um, to open up the connector and then un, uh, remove that connector from the map sensor. And then we'll be able to install our new EZX harness connector right into the factory sensor and then pigtail it into the connector itself. It's going to be a little bit hard to get on film, but that at least gives you the location of that map sensor. That'll be the most difficult one to get to in this installation. So that map sensor, again, we've got to pull that gray keeper back that's on the top of the connector back with our finger. Then we can press down on that gray keeper uh, to disengage the connection and pull that map sensor straight back while pressing down on that keeper. 
And now we've got our map sensor connector here. And we need to piggyback our new EZX harness in line. Now on this harness, you'll notice that we have connectors that look identical. One's for the fuel rail pressure, one is for the map. The way to know the difference is that the map sensor harness is longer. So the longer lead pigtail is the one that goes to our map sensor. So we're gonna route this in, plug one end into that sensor itself. Again, GM did a really good job of getting this where it's really hard to access. So it takes some finesse. You'll hear it click. And again, we're reusing the same style keeper on the top. So you've got to close that to keeper. So we've got the sensor end connected. And now we're gonna connect the other side of our EZX pigtail onto the factory harness that we disconnected from the truck originally. We've got our two connectors here. And these will only go together one way, so it's not gonna be a situation where you can do it wrong. We'll slide them together, you'll hear them click and then close that keeper. We've made our map sensor connection. We're gonna wrap this wire for our harness underneath our coolant bottle. And then we'll be able to reattach our coolant bottle to the firewall. We can put our air box lid back on. Then we'll make our connections at the MAF sensor and the rail pressure sensor. Okay, so with our map sensor connection made, we can put our coolant bottle back on those two mounting studs of the firewall. And then we can put our mounting bolt back into place. We, obviously, we've got our map sensor connector routed underneath that coolant bottle. Take that 10 millimeter bolt. that started. We'll go ahead and snug that up. Now removing the coolant bottle isn't a necessary step, but it's going to make it a whole lot easier to get your arm and hand back into that map sensor. And since we don't have to drain anything or disconnect hoses or anything, it's, it's really just a simple step. So get that snug back in place. We're good to go there. And then we can put our air box lid back on to the vehicle. This out of the way here. Make sure you get that tube back on and fully seated. Obviously, we don't want to have a leak here since it's after the air filter. Any dirt that could be sucked in through this hose is going to go right to the engine. So, we want to make sure that's on like it needs to be. lid back on. Obviously we need to tighten up our clamps. We had loosened this one in our previous step, but we didn't need to because we were able to disconnect it right from the intake tube itself, not from the lid. Again, you want to make sure you get these clamps tight. We don't want any debris getting pulled into the intake downstream of the air filter. Okay. So we've got our full connection here. This really short harness goes to the mass airflow. And then the longer one here is the one we're gonna to route to our rail pressure sensor. So we're actually gonna feed this under the oil dipstick tube. Here. 
And then the rail pressure sensor is actually loaded direct, located directly below this uh, intake tube that runs from the intercooler to the engine. The rail pressure sensor is facing forward right below. Um, we'll show a picture that can zoom in on that. But with that rail pressure connector, it's just like the map sensor where it's got the gray keeper on top. You pull back with your thumbnail and then press down on that gray keeper and you'll be able to disconnect that rail pressure sensor. You can see we've got our harness here in our hand. So this harness that we've rerouted is gonna plug in to one end of the harness. You'll hear it click and then you wanna close that keeper so that it stays connected. The other end of that harness is obviously gonna go on to the rail pressure sensor itself. If you've got small hands, this is not tough to access. But again, you'll hear it click and then close that keeper. So we've got a rail pressure connector connected. Now we're gonna move on to this mass airflow. Oops. One end on to the connector. It clicks, close the keeper. And then we've got the other end of that right here. Connect that again and also close that keeper there. So at this point we have made all of our connections to our sensors. We just need to make our connections at this main controller here. And then we'll plug in the EZX module itself and mount it to the back side of the airbox. I'm gonna reposition our camera so you can see how this uh, connector works so that you can get it disconnected and engage the new harness. So this is our main harness on this LM2 3 liter application. GM actually uses this connector on a lot of the vehicles, but it's kind of different and it's kind of, uh, if you don't see how to disconnect it, it would be very hard to figure out how to do it on your own. But first we need to pull back this red keeper You'll see that it disengages the little lock that's in this uh, round roller right here. Now the next step is that on the bottom portion of this connector you can see this tab that's on the corner where it's slit. You need to press in on that corner of that tab to disengage it and then this whole outside collar will slide upwards and it roll this um, round dial on the inside of the connector you'll actually see it roll. So you just press in on this tab with your thumb and then slide it upwards. And once it comes all the way up, it will disengage itself. We've got it all the way up so that uh, the outer collar is up here at that red tab. It will then just completely come disconnected. And now at this point, we need to connect the new EZX harness in place. So it's gonna slide down on, and then we're gonna take this outer gray collar and slide it all the way down until you hear it click. And then that keeper will be able to close on the dial. Same thing on the other end of that connector. Just slide it together, and then use your fingers to slide that outer collar all the way down. You'll hear it click, and then close that keeper. So that's our main harness connection made, and we can route this part of our harness around the back side of the airbox to install our EZX module. This is the final step. So our main harness is made, fuel rail pressure, mass airflow, and the map. The last part of this installation is to plug in our EZX module into the connector, you'll hear it click. We do include some double side tape and some Velcro that allows you to mount this module to the back side of your airbox lid. And then there's enough harness there as well so that you can take the lid off and off, on and off to service your air filter. But with that done, we can now move on to pairing our app to the module. And then we can go through all of the um, feature sets within the app and show you how to change power levels. So our EZX installation is now complete. We obviously need to reattach that negative battery terminal. At this point,
point, we're gonna sync up our app. So we have our EZX module that's here beside the air box lid. We'll set here on top just so you can see what we're doing here. We're gonna go into the cab of the truck and we're gonna turn on the power to the truck without starting the engine. So we're gonna press and hold our start stop button for about three seconds. You'll see that the whole vehicle will power up. Now we're gonna open up the EZX app that we've downloaded from the App Store. This is available for Android and for Apple. We're gonna open up that app. It's gonna search for the module, so you wanna make sure that your Bluetooth is on on your smartphone, obviously. Now this first time we sync to the app, you need to be within about 12 inches of the module itself. So it's best to do this right under the hood. You can take your phone and set it right on the module if you want. It says that it's detected that this is the first time connecting to the module and it wants to check to make sure that everything is got the current firmware in the module and that the app is current as well. So we're gonna select continue. The app itself will now connect to our server. If you don't already have uh, an account with our update agent software, it's gonna ask you to create an account. I've obviously already got an account with it, so it went right into that. It's detected the serial number on our device and the part number, which is correct, the 22710 for this application. It says that our device is up to date. We can uh, press the back button to continue with our sync. All right, so here we are. We've entered the main menu of our app and we can now start going through this feature set. We'll actually move the camera and get into the cab of the trucks. So we've got a little better lighting and we can talk about all these features and controls and how this module works. All right, so we've moved into the cab. We're gonna show you some of the controls that are available with this device in the three liter Duramax. So if we press and hold our start stop button without our foot on the brake, it'll power up the truck without actually starting the engine. Now with the EZX, <clears throat> you have the ability to change power levels on the fly. So anytime our cruise control is turned off, so if we've canceled cruise control, you're gonna be able to use our resume and our set buttons here on the steering wheel to change power levels. So we just press up for resume, and you can see that the speedometer will move. It's now on, it says 30. That means we're in setting three. We press up again, it's gonna to go to 40 for level four, and all the way up to 50 for level five. And then we can roll all the way back down level two, level one, and then zero for stock. Now, when the vehicle is in park, we can actually use these same buttons to control manual high idle mode. So if we're in park with the cruise control off, we can put, use these resume and set buttons to change the idle speed of the engine. So in the, the winter, if it's cold and you want the engine to warm up quicker, um, or you're gonna have extended idle time, you'd be able to uh, increase the engine RPM idle uh, in 100 RPM increments just by pressing our resume buttons. And then that high idle will disengage anytime we put our foot on in the brake, it's gonna go back to its factory idle speed. So that's how we control our power levels on the fly. You can change those at any time while you're driving. You'll see the speedometer sweep to show you what power level you're in. Now the app itself, we're gonna open up and we can walk through some of the feature sets within that app. It's searching for that module under the hood. The first time it connects, it obviously takes a little bit of time, but it's located our module under the hood through the Bluetooth signal and it's formulated all of the available feature sets we have for this three liter application. So up here in the top left, the first one is our power level. So this is just like our steering wheel controls. We can control the power levels through the app itself. Just by pressing that power level button, you can see that it'll highlight the level you're on. Now off to the right, you'll see these numbers, plus one, plus two, plus three. This is throttle sensitivity. So if you're someone that likes to run around in power level five, our preset power uh, throttle sensitivity is set at number five, which is a very aggressive pedal feel. 
but if that's too touchy, if you don't like that real aggressive pedal, you can go in and press that number and then you can have these seven preset throttle settings. So we can adjust that sensitivity to your preference. You can change that in each individual power level. So when you're running one of the lower power levels, if you're doing a lot of heavy towing, you want a little softer pedal, we can set it in say drive mode. That's the, a nice easy pedal, a little better than stock, but not really aggressive. You want to run level five and have a really aggressive pedal really good response we can crank it all the way up to the level six our ludicrous pedal setting so this is completely user adjustable you can change those at any time through the app itself within the app we also have the ability to adjust your tire size so this is where we can go in and we can calibrate the speedometer to read correctly if you've put aftermarket tires on the truck so it gives you the ability to put in your stock tire size which you can read off of your um, vin tag on the truck and then our modified tire size the one thing to remember that with a modified tire size say you've put a lift in 35 12 50 20s on your truck it's not often that that 35 inch tire is actually 35 inches tall. So it's gonna be best to grab a tape measure and measure from the ground to the top of your tire with it mounted and balanced and everything on the truck itself. You'll find that the 35 inch tire is usually like 33.75 uh, inches tall. And that's what we're gonna to wanna to input into the app here. That's gonna give us the most accurate uh, reading for the speedometer. And you, this may take some trial and error. You can use a GPS app on your phone to confirm that the speed on your GPS matches your speedometer. This truck has a set of 285 tires on it, which are about 32 and a half. So we can set that down to 32.5, input our factory tire size at 31 to give us that accurate reading. And then you go ahead and select update tire size says that this signal has been sent and it's been successful. Select OK to close. We can go back to our main menu. We have the ability to change gear ratio. Now this is a, a feature that you're only going to have to adjust if you have changed the ring and pinion in your truck. So you will never have to use this gear ratio setting unless you've changed your gears in the axles front and rear. This will uh, read your factory uh, gear ratio so we don't need to make any changes there unless you've put a different ring and pinion so if your truck came factory with 323s and you've changed them to 410s uh, which isn't as common today in newer trucks but it does make a big difference if you're running real big tires to change that gear ratio the ring and pinion but we do not need to make any changes here unless we've changed that differential TPMS settings so this allows us to adjust our TPMS so we can uh, raise that TPMS setting we can lower that threshold so we don't get a check engine light anytime we're changing to a different aftermarket tire button recall now this allows us to remember um, the last setting for our auto start stop so the three liter truck does have the auto start stop feature a lot of guys don't like that this feature will remember your button setting so normally every time you get in the truck and you start it if you don't want your auto start stop functioning you have to reach over and press that button on the dash every time you start the truck with the easy x installed when we engage our button recall you'll see that it's lit up green here the easy x is actually going to remember your previous button setting so if you had your auto start stop button pressed when you shut the truck off when it starts back up, it's gonna remember that button was pressed and it's gonna keep that deactivated. So we no longer have to press our auto start stop button on the dash every time we start the truck. The next feature is our speed limiter. We're able to go in and adjust the factory speed limiter. So this is obviously the setting for as fast as the truck will go. GM usually sets these uh, quite, uh, at a point where you don't necessarily need to go more than 95 miles an hour but if you're someone that goes to the track or whatever it might be you can raise that speed limiter we can go um, all the way up to 124 mile an hour in this truck again once you make that adjustment you'll have to select the update speed limiter and that'll send the signal to the truck to set it at your new setting ect protect this is not a feature that you have adjustability over this is just to let you know what the what it does this allows the easy x to to uh, monitor your engine cooling temperature. So it will not start adding power until it gets up to a safe coolant temperature. And then it will also recognize if that coolant temperature gets too hot, it'll start pulling power back. And so it's a built-in safety feature in the EZX. We've got the ability to do a manual DPF regen. This is a really nice feature for these diesel applications. If you're having problems with constant regen frequency um, or a regen starts and you're not able to drive until it 
it stops. You can command a manual regen with the device at any time. It'll walk you through the steps to do that. We've got our diagnostics menu so we can read and clear any trouble codes that come up. And then we can also check our emissions readiness status. So if you live in a county that requires you to do emissions testing, there are a bunch of readiness sensors in the, the emission system that all have to be triggered and um, turned on for it to go through that emissions process at your local emission store. So you can check to make sure that everything is set before you go to have your emissions test done. Uh, and then we've also got the high idle feature that's here. It, this basically in the app just tells you how to function it through your steering wheel. In our hamburger menu up here at the left, we've got our device info. It shows us what calibration we're on, the firmware, so we can go in and make sure that it's up to date. We can also check for updates here, and then we also have a link to our product store, and then there's a link to our customer service if you have any issues. So this EZX module for the three liter truck, um, it really, it really does make a difference in drivability with the improvement in the throttle sensitivity and the added horsepower. In this truck, we're uh, level five picks up about 27 horsepower at peak. That's clear up at like 35, 3600 RPM. But the big difference with this module is that we're, we're gaining over 40 horsepower at 2600 RPM. And it's 76, 77 foot pounds of torque down there at that 2600 RPM. So if you're someone that does a lot of towing with your three liter truck, Obviously it's a half ton truck, so you're not towing real heavy like you would with a heavy duty L5P Duramax. But if you're towing a camp trailer or a boat, that extra 40 horsepower and 76 foot pound of torque down at 2,600 RPM is incredible with a little extra weight behind the truck. You would definitely notice it. That 10 speed transmission just works better with the added torque um, and the power curve that the EZX adds. It makes the driving experience completely different from factory. Um, this really, really, is a worthwhile uh, upgrade for those guys that want just a little bit extra. This is a simple plug and play installation that you can do in a matter of 30 to 45 minutes. Um, the other nice thing is that the system is just piggybacking all the factory settings. Uh, so if you need to go in for a dealer service, you can basically just uninstall the entire EZX and it won't leave any traces in the system so that it goes back to factory. It's not like we're reflashing the ECM um, or causing anything that's going to trigger the dealer to know that we've been running a tuner. So you can just unplug those sensors, plug it back in like it was factory, and the EZX is completely removed from the vehicle. You can go and have your dealer service done. Then you can do the installation again after the fact. So that's a nice um, added bonus to doing the EZX inline module. Um, we've been offering this for the larger heavy duty Ram Cummins um, and the Ford Power Stroke trucks and have had really good success with this EZX module. Um, and I really think it's going to find a, a really good niche in this three liter Duramax application. Again, improved drivability, better power, better throttle response. The turbocharger works a little bit better with the EZX module installed. And then we have seen the slight pickup in fuel mileage. Again, the three liter already gets pretty uh, respectable fuel mileage for what it is. Um, but the EZX has shown some improvements in that as well because we are making some changes to that fuel curve, the rail pressure settings. Um, so if you want to learn more about the EZX, you can visit edgeproducts.com. You can visit the website, visit your local Edge dealer, um, and even check out our social media. We'd love to hear your feedback. If you get the EZX installed in your 3-liter Duramax, we'd love to hear your feedback, um, and we look forward to hearing from you.